All right, in this video, we're gonna be going over the second part of this viewer question. I've been wondering how much therapy for teens costs and if your insurance can cover the costs. So in last week's video, I covered the four different costs of therapy. And today I'm gonna to be talking a little bit how insurance coverage works for mental health services, at least here in the United States of America. In other areas of the world, I'm not entirely sure how it works because I don't practice there. Just keep that in mind when you're watching this video, it might work a little bit different in your area of the world. So there are three main ways that insurance may be able to cover the financial costs of therapy. These are in-network coverage, out-of-network coverage, and single case agreements, sometimes referred to as out-of-network exceptions. Well, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Mallory Grimsey, and I am a teen therapist. I am here to help you improve your mental health. If that is something that you're into, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification. That way you are notified every single time I post a new video. If you are looking for help or support getting started with mental health therapy for whatever situation you're dealing with, you might want to share this video with your parents if they're concerned about financial costs or investment or how to start therapy. Like we talked about in last week's video, one of the main costs of therapy is financial, which is where insurance can potentially help out. So real quick, before we dig into this, I need to just point out that I am not an insurance expert. The best person to talk about when it comes to seeing how your insurance can potentially cover the financial aspects of paying for therapy is your insurance provider themselves. And that's because each person's insurance provider and plan under that insurance provider may look a little bit different because it's catered to you or your family's needs. In the United States of America, we do have what's called the mental health parity, which means that legally speaking, at the time of this video, insurance providers must provide equal or similar coverage for benefits of mental health, behavioral, or substance use conditions as they do for other health conditions. So just a quick note that equal coverage does not equal good coverage. It just means comparable or similar. In-network coverage is typically the most easy to understand because it's the most widely used use of your health insurance coverage for health services. So what this means is that when somebody is considered in network with your insurance plan, they have a written contract with the insurance provider that they will accept the rate that the insurance will pay them in exchange for their members being able to access services with that provider. So that means like, say for example, you have ABC insurance. Yes, I'm making up a health insurance because insurance plans are all different and I don't want you to mistake the example for an actual insurance provider. ABC insurance, you go to their website or you go to a provider's website and you look and see, do they accept ABC insurance as direct payment? If they do, that means that they are in network. And so you would just follow whatever coverage plan your insurance says that they cover for in-network services. So this may mean meeting a deductible, may mean paying a copay. It may mean something completely different. Check with your insurance provider directly. Now, many mental health therapists actually prefer to work on what's called an out-of-network basis. So out-of-network means that they are still licensed able to provide the services that your insurance may or may not cover, but it would be under what's called an out-of-network coverage benefit. That means that that provider does not have a contract with that insurance. So you would pay for the services up front and then seek reimbursement from your insurance provider out of your out-of-network coverage benefits. If you have the letters PPO or POS on your insurance card, you more likely than not have out-of-network benefits. If you're not sure if you have out-of-network coverage or what that looks like for mental health services, I want you to call member services on the back of your card and you want to ask these three questions. Question number one, do I have out-of-network benefits or coverage on my plan for behavioral or mental health services? Now, some insurances classify 
um, mental health therapy under behavioral health. So if you don't use that language, they might say no when they really mean yes. If you do, then ask, what is my coverage and what is your reimbursement policy? This is where they'll tell you if you have to meet a certain out-of-pocket deductible before they start reimbursing for a portion or all of the out-of-pocket costs, similar to your car insurance. So many of us, if you have car insurance, you have a deductible so that if you end up in an automobile accident or you need to use your automobile insurance for any reason, you have to pay up to a certain out-of-pocket cost before your automobile insurance coverage kicks in. The same is true for health insurance coverage. And then the third question, this requires a little research. If you already have a mental health diagnosis, you want to have that actual diagnosis and preferably the DSM-5 code that goes along with it so that your insurance provider can look up specifically for that diagnosis, what they are willing to cover and not cover. If you have a specific provider in mind that you're looking for reimbursement coverage for out-of-network benefits, you also want to ask that provider what are the codes that they use to bill for services rendered. Now, these are not the same from discipline to discipline, and they're not always the same even therapist to therapist. So as an LCSW or licensed clinical social worker, I have certain diagnostic codes for similar services provided that a psychologist would use, but the number code that I use as an LCSW would be different than a psychologist would use. Now, I don't know why they get so nuanced with uh, the different insurance coverages, but uh, they do. <laughs> so make sure that you are referencing the right codes when you are asking for what your insurance provider specifically reimburses for. And if you happen to know the session rates for those codes, even better because then you can get exact numbers. Oh, that was a doozy. <laughs> so the third option is a little more complicated and that is called a single case agreement or sometimes referred to as an out of network exception. So there may be extreme circumstances where if you don't have out of network coverage or the out of pocket cost is so extreme to access the services that you so desperately need, your insurance may be willing to enter into what's called a single case agreement with you or the provider. So what this means is that even though the plan that you have previously signed up for with your insurance provider dictates that you may or may not have certain coverage options, if you are needing to see somebody who is highly specialized or trained, or you're having difficulty locating an in-network provider, or their in-network providers do not work with your population or specific issue, you may be eligible for requesting a single case agreement to work with your preferred provider. Now, this is not a guarantee. It often requires a clinical letter of support which means that you may need to take a risk, complete a client assessment to obtain a diagnosis and that letter before you can start working with that provider. For example, I happen to be one of few therapists in this area in Connecticut where I currently practice that runs group therapies for teenagers. Because of that, if somebody cannot find another provider to provide that level of care and support and it's deemed medically necessary for them to engage in that level of treatment and care, then they may be eligible for pursuing that single case agreement. Ultimately though, your insurance provider gets to decide whether they want to engage in that level of support with you or not. If you are feeling depressed and you're looking for ways to ask your parents for help and tell them that you're feeling depressed, I highly recommend that you watch the video on your screen right here where I'm talking all about how to get that support from them. And if you found this information in this video useful and helpful, please be sure to share it. You never know who you could be helping in the process. Thanks for watching.